next talk is by Matthias Sonnleitner, and he's going to speak about critical intersection goals of shuttle controls. Thank you for the introduction, and first of all, I want to thank the organizers for bringing us together in such a wonderful program. So, I really enjoy being in Bonn here. And this talk is based on some joint work with Christoph Thiele, who is also one of the organizers, not here currently. And so let me start with some motivation. So, we are interested in volume distribution in high dimensional convex bodies. So, in a sequence of convex bodies, I'm interested in how the volume is distributed as the dimension tends to infinity. So there are many approaches how to study such a question. And the one idea I will be focusing on here is the following. So we take a sequence of reference bodies Ln, and then we are interested in the probability that a uniformly uniform at random chosen random vector in Kn is in a multiple of Ln. And yeah, we are interested in the behavior as T t varies. And we will assume following normalization, so we assume that the volume of Kn and the volume of Ln is normalized, and we are interested now in the volume of the intersection Kn with T Ln as n tends to infinity. And this question is yeah, somewhat classical, so the original case where this was considered was the case of LP balls. So let me say something about this case. So we define the LP norm on RN as usual and define LP balls as being the set of vectors with P norm at most one and we normalize them in order to have volume one. So DPN is the rescaled LP ball such that its volume is one. And now we are interested in the intersection of such an LP ball with an LQ ball, some P different from Q. And in fact, there's a result by Schechtmann and Schmuckenschläger from 91 with extensions by Schmuckenschläger 98 and 2001, which says that the limiting volume of this intersection is zero if T is too small. So, okay, if we intersect with a very small body, then we get volume zero in the limit. It's one, so we get the whole volume of, yeah, of our original ball if t is large enough, and in fact there's a critical threshold where this behavior changes, so a critical value tpq, and at this threshold the limiting volume is one over two. And yeah, this works for p not equal to q, because for p equals q, Okay, the, this is the uninteresting case. And this question and this result motivated um, several people in our community to study similar questions for different families, not only people's. So I list some of the results here. <coughs> and these statements, so of the form that there exists some critical threshold above which we get volume one in the intersection and volume zero here below, such a result was proven. So for the case of AP balls, I just showed you, but also for simplex ball-edge balls, which are generalization of AP balls, mixed norm balls, which are um, matrix balls, where you take Q and P norm about, um, with respect to columns and rows respectively, and also LP ellipsoids, which are yet another generalization of AP balls, where you rescale each coordinate differently, and also Lorentz balls, which are yet another generalization of LP balls. And so at the critical threshold, where the one which is the interesting case basically, so here we get one half in the cases one and two, and for five and uh, four and five, we get some possibly different values between zero and one, and for three and six, we do not yet know um, anything about the critical threshold. And in general, so I, I want to focus more on this critical intersection volume, so the value of the um, intersection volume at this critical threshold. 
And in order to explain why this is one half, and in order to explain also what happens for Schatten keyboards, I want to give some rather general approach how, how can we study the volume of such an intersection. And in fact, this is related to limit theorems, which would maybe fit into the next event at this trimester, but here it nicely combines geometry and probability. So let's see and let's consider the following more general situation. So let's assume we have two norms on the space of sequences. So before we had, for example, the P norm, the Q norm, and we consider the Rn um, yeah, and the X norm on the, on the space and the unit ball with respect to the, this norm. So this gives us a convex spot in Rn. And we yeah, are letting n vary, we get a family of convex bodies. And these, these, are, um, these have in common this, this norm x, so there are restrictions of, of this yeah, infinite dimensional object. And we can normalize now these balls to volume 1 and also do the same for y. And then we, we can write the volume, so it will be convenient to write volume to the 1 over n, so this volume radius. Um, in terms of its asymptotic expansion, we have some leading constant in front and, and a n characterizes the behavior in, in n. And then we have the following um, helpful result, which connects now probability with, with this geometry, namely if we have a uniformly distributed uh, random vector in this <coughs> ball, e n x, and if this vector satisfies that in probability, when we scale with e n um, over a n, and it converges to some constant, which may be plus infinity, then the limiting volume of the intersection is zero. If t is smaller than a critical value, where this critical value is now this constant c times this leading constant divided by this leading constant, and one if t is above. This value. So this explains the uh, non-critical behavior. So, so if t is equal to t x y, we will study this in a moment. But first, let me give the quick proof of this lemma. And here we um, have the lemma again, and the proof is really quite quite sh short. So. We write the volume of this um, intersection in the following way. So, volume of this intersection can be written as the probability that the um, y norm of x is smaller than this value. Why? Because if you um, bring this fraction of volume radii to the other side, you see that okay, x was uniformly distributed in B x n. If you um, divide by this then you get that it's uniformly distributed in dx n and you can compute the norm and so that this is also just a rescaling of the norm y and you can multiply by en over an both sides and then if yeah, this tends to a limit then we see x over cy and we assume that <coughs> The left hand side tends to limit the probability, and you get probability that c is so a constant is smaller than another constant, and okay, this is zero or one depending on the relation of the constant. So this explains what happens in non-critical case. So we need a limit theorem for the norm, <coughs> we need limit in probability, and with respect to this volume radius. So for the critical case, what happens there? For the critical case, we need some more refined limit theorems. So here we had convergence yeah, in probability to some constant, but if you yeah, plug in now the critical value here, you don't get the information you want. So you cannot do this so simply. So you need to be a little bit more delicate. So it's nothing, nothing magical here, but you need to know something more. So um, we can do the following. So if we have written our volume radii like this, Cxan and Cybn, 
then we can write the um, this fraction we scaled already in the following way, so that this en is some error which tends to zero. So we can now um, study how fast this error tends to zero, and we need to know something about this error in order to deduce this more delicate result which gives us the critical value. Namely, if now our x uniformly distributed in this convex body bxn satisfies the following, so we don't have convergence in probability, but we even have a limit in distribution if we um, subtract the, the, the limit and we scale it by Sn, by Sn some positive sequence tending to zero, and R is some continuous random variable, then the li limiting volume at the intersection, uh, at the critical value, is the probability that R is at most C times U, where U is this limit between uh, of the fraction and of this En, so the error in our volume approximation, and Sn, the scaling of this distributional limit theory. And using this result one, one can then proceed to study the uh, critical thresholds for various families of norms, so x and y norms. And I showed you before already the result for um, p-balls, and I will also show you a result for Schatten p-balls. And before I do this, I want to explain where the critical value one half comes from. So here we would need one half if we want to have critical value one half, and it's quite a nice reason then that's one half up here. So we assume this distributional convergence and this that we can write the fraction of volume radio as such. And often the if we take the y norm of, of such a random vector, y norm, in the case of LQ norm, for example, this is an average over the components. And um, sometimes it satisfies a central limit theorem as we We'll see for the um, peoples, and often the convergence en is up to zero as rapid, so we can really well um, study the, this volume. So we know the asymptotic expansion well. And so if this convergence is fast enough, then this will tend to zero, and r will be a um, normally, so Gaussian with some variance. And then we get probably that the R is at most zero, which gives you one half. So this explains critical value one half. Yeah, question? Um, do you know where the variance would reflect? Um, so the variance, okay. I mean, variance comes comes from here. So I don't have a geometric explanation for this. So. I would have to say that yeah, yeah, you have this limit theorem and yeah, if you have a CLT for this quantity, so central limit theorem, then okay, you get the Gaussian with some variance, which and the variance is um, comes from this expansion, but I, I cannot give you some some deeper understanding. Uh, what limit you would get, right? Geometrically what other quantity would how we could characterize the variance in terms of the geometric some, some mm. Yeah, I don't know what what this would reflect, but yeah, okay. interesting, interesting question. Thanks. Okay, so maybe let's let's see what this means for LP boys, so that we get a little feeling for this ab abstract approach. And for LP boys, there's this. Um, very useful stochastic representation um, derived by Schechtmann and Sinn and independently by Ratchev and Rüschendorf. Mm -hmm. And it says the following. So if you have a uniformly distributed vector in an LP ball, then you can in fact write it in distribution It's equal to a uniform um, over 0 to 1 to the power of 1 over n and a vector of P Gaussians. So these have this um, probability density, density function divided by the p-norm of this vector. 
And using this representation, we can study now Q norm, for example, of this vector. So the Q norm of this vector, so I wrote it here, we scaled appropriately, it's the Q norm of this um, P Gaussians here, divided by the P norm of this P Gaussians here, and the rescaling in front is already the rescaling you get from this volume radii. So we know that the volume radii behave like so, and we also know the volume radii well enough to know that the um, error tends to, to zero fast enough. And so here we have a sum of independent random variables and some, some factor which will tend to a constant by the law of large numbers. And if we, we can subtract then the limiting value for this and via the delta method we get a central limit theory. So we have Sn this rescaling and we know that this tends to zero and this will give us that we have one half as the critical intersection volume. Okay, so this is for p balls. Let's switch to Schatten balls, Schatten p balls, which are um, kind of similar in structure to LP balls. Yeah, but some interesting phenomena happen here. So, um, first, before I switch to them, let me consider the case of Q equals infinity. There is some rather different behavior. So, for the Q norm, we have this average over the peak oceans, but for the infinity norm, we have maximum of these independent parts. So for maximum, we get uh, Gumbel fluctuations. So Gumbel, standard Gumbel distribution has this probability distribution. And if you then um, compute it now, the limit at the critical threshold or at any value, in fact, at any t, you get zero. So now this is because you have a different scaling and you do need to uh, rescale a bit. So this is maybe somewhat artificial, but if you um, we scale now log n to the 1 over p, then you get, in fact, a limit theorem as before. If uh, you get some interesting behavior depending on whether p equals 1 or p is larger than 1. So this also follows from the approach I just showed you. And now for Schatten p balls, we, we are interested in self or joint matrices over different fields. So R, C, complex numbers are the skew field of quaternions, so you don't need to know much about quaternions to understand the following. So, I like you can just focus on the first two, and the Schatten p ball is defined in terms of the eigenvalues of these matrices. So, we look at the p norm of the eigenvalues of these matrices and collect all, all these matrices such that the p norm is at most one. And here we are in a space of dimension, this dimension, Vn. And we can again proceed similarly as before. So we look at this Schatten key ball. We rescale it so that it has volume 1. And this would give us this ball. And we can again study the intersection of Schatten key ball with a Schatten Q ball rescaled <coughs> by a factor of t. And here we have the following limit theorems. So we have for the non-critical case that yeah, there exists such a sharp threshold again, so that we have zero below, zero above, which is very nice. <coughs> so the critical value was unknown before. And together with Christoph, we looked at a very special case and determined the limiting um, value at the critical case. So we were only able to solve this very special case of p equals 2, so complex numbers p equals 2 and q equals infinity. And I will explain the following, where these restrictions, severe restrictions come from, and what's the rough idea, why does this value here appear. So this value here is the distribution function of tracy rhythm um, evaluated at 0 squared. And let us see how this this comes here into play. So, for this we need again a stochastic representation, which is uh, also very nice for Schatten peoples. So, you, it allows you to forget somewhat of the complicated geometry maybe of Schatten peoples, but you see that um, the eigenvalues are distributed 
very similar as for keyboards. So you get, get again a uniform to one other dimension and some vector, not now of independent Gaussians, but you have some dependence between them. So this vector C, this says um, the n components are distributed according to this probability density function. So you have this uh, dependence between them, which is um, a common thing, common density to study in random matrices. So this beta ensembles where uh, this can be interpreted as some potential. So it's very, very nice theory connected to this here. And yeah, you, you can choose those independent these random variables. And now we look at basically the Q norm of such a vector. So very similar as before. But now we don't have independence, but this kind of probability density function. And now let me um, come to the restrictions we have. So first is volume asymptotics. So we need to know the volume because we want to rescale by the volume radii and then look at the limit theorems. So we need to need the volume to some extent. And for Schatten peoples, the volume is in fact not not known exactly except for p plus 2 and for p plus infinity where you have these two special integrals, Selberg and Meta integrals and in fact one can use these special integrals to derive the following asymptotics for the volume ratio of volume radio which looks like this with this error and for p not equals 2 or infinity yeah the yes, so there's um, some, asymp yeah, some asymptotics also, which is derived by, by some, some or more, and made more precise by um, <coughs> Sakai, Yosha, and Christoph. And some more, I don't know exactly what he derived, but yeah, this was extension. Uh, up to constant, yeah, right. So he computed it up to a constant, and the limiting constant was determined here. But now we would need something even more, not even the limiting leading term, but in fact, uh, how fast it converges. And we don't know this for um, any p which is not 2 or infinity. So this is one thing we would have need to know to continue. So this explains the restriction to um, p plus 2 and q plus infinity. And now let me explain the restriction to beta equals 2. So the restriction to beta equals 2 comes from the following. So for beta equals 2, we have a relation to the following matrix ensemble, which is the Gaussian unitary ensemble. We take complex Gaussians in your in lower diagonal and real Gaussians on, on the diagonal. And yeah, take take a mission random matrix, so Wigner matrix, and then you get that the eigenvalues have this probability density, density function. So similar as with P plus 2, P plus 2 here. And we know that the largest eigenvalue has, uh, has this convergence, so the fluctuations are trace to rhythm. And this explains where trace to rhythm distribution comes from. And we need not only to look at the maximum eigenvalue, but at the absolute value. So we need some to know something also about the smallest eigenvalue. And the fluctuations are asymptotically independent, in fact, for beta equals 2, but this is unknown for beta equals not equal to 2. So this explains our restriction to beta equals 2. And for beta equals 2, we can derive then the following limit theorem for the um, Schatten infinity norm of this uniform random matrix chosen in this matrix ball and together with the volume asymptotics this gives us the limit for the Schatten balls. So to sum up we know only this special case critical value in this special case and to resolve the other cases we would need some first of all more precise asymptotics for the volume radii and also to know some uh, the asymptotic independence of fluctuations of smallest and largest eigenvalue of these uh, ensembles. And even the case of P plus 2 and P plus 1, so the Gaussian orthogonal ensemble where you 
have um, real value matrices, this, this is also unknown, at least I don't know. So if you know something in this direction, then please tell me. So thank you for your attention.